Ladies and gentlemen, please join me now to welcome His Excellency the President, John Dramani Mahama. Thank you. Kindly be seated. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, distinguished and honorable inv invited guests, national president, executives, and members of NAT, our foreign guests and visitors, my dear comrades and friends. Let me begin by extending my sincerest apologies for the late start of this program. It was because I had divided responsibilities. I had two programs which clashed directly, and um, it was my desire to be here with you to lend my presence to the significance of your fourth quadrennial, and that's why I insisted on coming. At a point, I was tempted when time was passing to delegate the minister to standing for me, but I thought that to pay my respect to the leadership of teachers, I must be here personally. It's a great pleasure for me to have the opportunity to address the fourth quadrennial and 51st National Delegates Conference of Ghana's Pioneer Teachers Union, the Ghana National Association of Teachers. It is also not a coincidence, but very significant that this is my first public engagement after clocking the milestone of my first year in office. I'm sure all this indicates the importance that government attaches to the role that teachers play. All of us are what we are because of a teacher. There's a car sticker that I see often that carries the message very poignantly. And it says, if you can read this, thank a teacher. And as a nation, we must forever be grateful to our teachers who take our young minds and mold them into the adults that we become. I often think of my teachers from primary school right through to university, and I thank them in my heart for what they have made of me. On this occasion, I remember Mr. Ano, Mr. Kwame Edim, Ms. Broby, Ms. Williams Bafo, who passed away recently, Mr. Monufie, and in secondary school, Mr. Wintum, Mr. Bruna, and the many others, in university, Professor Adofenin, Professor Kwame Karikari, Professor P.A.V. Ansa, and the many others through whose hands I passed to reach where I am today. I salute all my teachers, and I pray that God continues to richly bless them. Your theme for this conference is Education in Crisis, the Development Agenda Beyond 2015. It cannot have come at a better time. Next year is 2015, and it marks the end of the MDG goals that we set ourselves in the year 2000. And therefore, the whole world has started to take stock of what achievements we have made in the period that we have pursued these MDGs. And therefore, in your quadrennial conference and 51st National Delegates Conference coming at this time, you could not have chosen a better team than look beyond 2015 and start discussing what the development agenda should be. Ghana has been largely successful in achieving the MDGs on school enrollment and gender parity. But we still are faced with many challenges at different levels of the education structure. It is said that there are three important factors for a successful learning experience. And that is that there must be a pupil or a student who is available and ready to learn. There must be a teacher who is available 
motivated and happy to teach. And there must be learning aids and facilities to promote that learning environment. All these three factors are important and must be handled in tandem in order to create a successful learning experience. It is important to have adequate learning facilities in order to create the environment for learning to take place. And government considers this a very serious priority. And that is why government has been working to ensure that learning materials are available and that the facilities for learning are also available. Recently, the Ministry of Education has distributed about 12.5 million textbooks to the basic level to ensure that every child in Ghana has at least the three core textbooks that are required for learning. In the past, we have also distributed free exercise books to students across the country to ensure that they have the books in which to record their lessons. These are important, and I know they are because I've been a member of a rural, I've been a member of parliament of a rural constituency before. And in rounds that I have made in my constituency, in the past, when I was in parliament, I've come across schools where the only textbook that existed was the teacher's own, and the children had no textbooks. Children had no exercise books in which to record the lessons that they were being taught. And so it's important that government invest in ensuring that the children have access to textbooks and exercise books. Aside from that, the environment in which the pupil or student learns is, is important. We have been talking about schools and the trees, and government has invested a lot to try and eliminate these schools and the trees. So far, we have built close to 2,000 primary schools across the country to eliminate existing schools and the trees. But work is not over. We estimate at the beginning of the exercise that there were 4,000, approximately 4,300 schools under trees across the country. And so we still have about 2,300 schools under trees to eliminate. And it is government's intention that we will invest more money towards eliminating these uh, uh, substandard schools. We've also invested a lot of money in rehabilitating the science resource centers in order to ensure that children are able to be able to practicalize their knowledge in science education. We have embarked on aggressive provision of facilities at the secondary and tertiary level to ensure that we are able to increase the capacity to absorb more students. With regards to teacher motivation and availability, there's still a lot to be done. There are still many schools in the country without teachers. Indeed, if you go to many rural schools, there are still schools where you have two teachers or three teachers handling six classes. And this is an unacceptable situation. It is partly this that explains the decision to increase the amount of teacher trainees that our existing colleges of education can absorb. Early in the life of this administration, we realized that one of the constraints for failing the teacher trainee colleges was the fact that government did not have enough money to pay teacher trainee allowances. And so while there was space to absorb more teachers, we could not absorb them because government could not raise the money to pay teacher trainee allowances. And so it was only practical that we take the steps to make sure that all the colleges of education could enroll uh, students to their full capacity. And that informed the decision of the Ministry of Education to transfer the students from the teacher training allowances to the student's loan trust scheme. None of the students enrolled was deprived of their teacher training allowances. Those who had already started to earn them are continuing to earn them until they finish. What decision was taken was that new students coming into these teacher training colleges, uh, these colleges of education, would rather take loans from the Student Loan Trust. And so that is the decision that has been taken. As a result of this decision, the enrollment in teacher training colleges has moved from 9,000 trainees to 15,000 this year alone. And it's our expectation that that number is going to increase. 
in order to ensure that we're training more teachers to fill the classrooms. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that there are issues outstanding as a result of the implementation of the single spine salary structure. And it is my belief that working together with your ex executive in a spirit of understanding and consensus building, we will iron out the issues that are outstanding. We need to continue to support the National Best Teacher Awards in order to reward teachers who have been outstanding in the year, and so government remains committed to that. I also want to congratulate Nat for operating what I'm told is the biggest and best welfare fund in the country. This welfare fund, I am told, is involved in assisting teachers with small loans and other facilities, and is also involved in a housing scheme for teachers. I wish to pledge that whatever government can do to assist you in this regard, we are willing to discuss and see how we can help. Ladies and gentlemen, you also have the pupil or the student. And as I said, we've been largely successful in meeting the MDG target on enrollment. But we still have children in parts of this country who are out of school. If you take a look at the averages, it can be deceptive. While we have hit the target, there are pockets in this country where the margin of children going to school is still low and unacceptable. In 2013 alone, 25,000 out-of-school children have been identified and enrolled under the Complementary Education Program, which is being managed by nine partners of ours, including the School for Life. It is as a result of this that government has implemented programs that seek to assist and encourage enrollment of children. And so the school uniforms program, in order to provide children all across the country with uniforms, is one such incentive. I've already talked about the textbooks and school exercise books program. It is our intention to continue to also expand the school feeding program so that we're able to provide each Ghanaian child with one nutritious meal a day while in school. As I said, we'll continue the elimination of schools and the trees to improve the environment to make it more attractive for children to attend school. At the secondary level, we identify access as one of the major constraints to education. It is estimated that 47% of children who qualify from junior secondary school to enter senior secondary school are unable to continue because there is just no space. And therefore, the intention to build new community day secondary schools will improve the situation. In addition, there is the issue of affordability, especially at the secondary level. Secondary education continues to be the most burdensome to parents. And therefore, under the direction of the Minister of Education, stakeholder consultations are ongoing to see how we can implement the constitutional provisions of progressive free education. In the meantime, steps have been taken to rationalize fees in the schools. And fees such as kitchen fees and bed fees have been successfully eliminated. And it is my hope that the rationalized fees would encourage uh, parents to be able to put their children in school. Our commitment to education is clear. This sector consumes the largest chunk of our budget more than one third of the national budget is committed to the education sector alone. Therefore, if we, are if we are committing such a large amount of resources to the sector, then the outcomes we should see must be better. If today in our team, in our team we talk about a crisis in education, then it means we have a challenge in achieving value for money for the resources spent, and we must therefore strive for greater efficiency 
and productivity in the sector. It is often said, to whom much is given, much is expected. But let me add my voice to the issue of teacher absenteeism. It is known that an important factor in teaching and learning is the number of contact hours between pupil and teacher. If the number of contact hours between pupil and teacher are low, definitely the outcome of the learning experience will be disappointing. Absenteeism of teachers is estimated at about 20% and therefore reduces considerably the teacher-pupil contact hours. And this is partly responsible for the poor outcomes that we see in education, especially in the rural communities. I've asked the Minister of Education to draw up and implement a program to strengthen the inspection regime of the education sector to ensure not only teacher attendance, but also quality in the teaching and learning process. On this occasion, let me take the opportunity to commend the outgoing leadership of the Ghana National Association of Teachers for a good job done and for the cooperation we have enjoyed in resolving issues of teachers' remuneration and welfare. It is my hope that we can enjoy the same level of cooperation and consensus with the incoming leadership that will be sworn into office at this National Delegates Conference. I also hope that at this conference you will discuss dispassionately some of the constraints and challenges facing not only your profession, but the education sector as a whole. I'll be anxious to hear the conclusions of your conference to enable us to formulate and modify policy to improve our education sector. I've noted the concern expressed by your president at the work of the National Pensions Regulatory Authority, and I'm going to request the board and CEO of the authority to expeditiously convene a roundtable conference with organized labor to discuss the issue of investment. <laughs> to convene a roundtable with organized labor to discuss the issue of investment of your hard earned pension funds in order to remove any misunderstanding existing in your minds. On this note, I wish you a happy Delegates Conference, and it is my honor and privilege to declare this fourth quadrennial and 51st National Delegates Conference duly open. Long live teachers of Ghana. Long live Ghana. Thank you.